In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to read the DHT11 or DHT22 humidity and temperature sensor. For this tutorial, you need an Arduino, a breadboard, three jumper wires, mail to mail, a DHT11 or DHT22 sensor, and a 4K7 resistor. There are two types of DHT sensors, the 11 and the 22. Basically they work the same, but the 22 is a lot more sensitive than the DHT 11. Keep in mind that the DHT 22 is also more expensive. The sensor has four pins. The first pin on the left is the 3.3 volt pin. Keep in mind that this is 3.3 volt and not 5 volt. So we're going to connect this one to the 3.3 volt on the Arduino. The second pin is the data. It's being used to transmit data to the Arduino with all the measurements the sensor makes. The third one is the NC pin, which means not connected. So basically it's a bogus pin which doesn't do anything uh, but only give the sensor grip in your breadboard. The fourth pin is the ground. To build the circuit is pretty straightforward. We start by putting the sensor inside our breadboard. As I told you before, the first pin is the 3.3 volt. So we're going to connect this pin with the 3.3 volt on the Arduino. The second pin is the data. I'm going to use pin 12 to read out the data in my Arduino scratch. So I'm connecting the green wire to pin number 12 on the Arduino. The last one is the ground. So the third is not connected, so the fourth pin is connected to the ground on the Arduino. Now we also have a resistor. This is the 4K7 resistor, which is 4,700 ohms but most of the time resistors are written in an abbreviated version like 4K7 or 5K6, which means 5600. We're going to build a pull-up resistor as I showed you in the one-wire tutorial. This pull-up resistor will reduce the noise on the data line and we're going to put it between the VCC, so the 3.3 volt, and the data pin, which is pin 12. So basically between the red and a green wire, like this. And it could be a little tricky to put it in between, but there you go. So now we have the resistor between the red and the green line, data, and the 3.3 volt. And now we're ready to program our sketch. So this is the code for reading out the DHT11 or DHT22 sensor. And as you can see in line 27, we are using the dht.h library. And in order to use this library, we first have to install it. So you go to sketch, include library, manage library. And then you're going to search for the Adafruit Unified Sensor, Adafruit Unified Sensor Library. And if you scroll a little bit down, you see here the Adafruit Unified Sensor Library. I already installed it, but you can press the install button. And then you also have the DHT library. And basically the DHT library is also used, uh, created by Adafruit. So you can install this one as well. And you should then be able to use the library defined in the code here. Uh, on line 29 I've defined a variable called DHT pin and it's set to 12 since we connected our data line to pin number 12. And here I wrote a comment because it basically depends on what kind of chip you're using for your DHT sensor. I use the 11 but if you have a 22 or 21 you need to uncomment that line and comment line 34. And on line 38, we initialize the DHT library. So what we're going to do here is the library initializes on the pin we defined, which was pin 12, and on our type, in my case, DHT 11. So now the library knows how to connect to the sensor and read its values. 
I've defined five different variables. One to store the humidity, one to store the temperature in Celsius, the temperature in Fahrenheit, and a heat index in Celsius and in Fahrenheit. So it's the, the wind chill temperature. Then we initialize the serial monitor and we initialize the DHT and with begin we tell the sensor to start or the Arduino to start reading the sensor. And our loop is pretty straightforward. We read the humidity and store it in the humidity file. And we do the same for the temperature in Celsius and Fahrenheit. If you um, set the parameter of the function read temperature to true, it knows you want to have it in Fahrenheit. Well, then we have to check if the values are read correctly. So we're checking with is none, which means is not a number. So if the humidity value, value or the temperature value in sensor, uh, Celsius or the temperature value in Fahrenheit is not a number, then we print to the serial monitor reading the HT sensor failed and we return. We end the loop because it doesn't make sense to continue since the values are all uh, read wrong by the Arduino. So it starts all over again and reads the values again. And only when these three values are a number, then it continues. Well, here we calculate the heat index based on the temperature in Celsius, the same with Fahrenheit. And here we print all the data which we fetch to the serial monitor. We wait for two seconds and then we repeat it all over again. So if we upload the sketch to the Arduino, then we can open the serial monitor. And then when our program starts, it starts reading out the sensor. And as you can see here, it reads a humidity of, well, 52, 54%. But the temperature is pretty accurate. It's not that warm in here. And as you can see, it also calculates the wind chill. So if you have a problem and these values do not appear, or for example, your sensor tends to be really hot, make sure you've connected the right pins. Sometimes people complain, well, the sensor gets very hot and it could uh, have several reasons. You've connected this sensor to the 5 volt and actually it should be connected to the 3.3 volt. So it's getting too much current. Another thing is that you connected the wrong pin, so set current on uh, the data line, then the sensor will get really hot and you might even damage it. So check all these things and otherwise contact me via email or in the comment section so I can help you out. So in this second exercise, what I did was I only changed the part where we print stuff to the serial monitor. So as you can see, I print a value and then I print backslash T and then the temperature value in Celsius and then backslash N. These are special values. These control values are a tap, so as indicated here in line 72, and the slash backslash N is a new line. We need this because we're going to use the serial plotter. Normally we're using the serial monitor which shows just text but you can also plot values in a chart and it uses a special format where there's tab separated values and a new line for each new value so if i send this to my arduino and i go to tools and say serial plotter as you can see normally we choose here serial monitor and this is the serial plotter and as you see it's now plotting the humidity in the chart, as you can see here. So now, if I hold the sensor a little bit with my hands, you'll see that the values are increasing. And it gets very moisty because my hands will heat up the sensor and it makes it more moisty. And you can also see here a red line, and that indicates the temperature. So the nice thing about this is that, that you can actually show measurement values in your Arduino toolkit without having to do anything. You, it's all working out of the box as long as you keep in mind, and I move my window a little bit to the left, that you use the tab separator between two values and a new line separator for each new measurement. So you can, if, if you have a distance sensor, for example, you can play around with this plotter because you can actually plot the distance. You can even use it for speed or, or light, um, amount of light 
a light sensor measures that you can think of a lot of things you can show and plot in this chart. So today you've learned how to use the DHT11 sensor, how you can read the values and how you can plot them in this chart. Finally, I like to challenge you with another exercise. In the previous chapter, you've learned how to use an LED screen. In this chapter, you've learned how to read the temperature of a DHT11 sensor. I like to challenge you to combine those two and make this project where you display the values on this LCD screen. I want you to show the humidity, the temperature, the wind chill temperature, and use custom icons to display this. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section. And all the parts used in this tutorial are shown in the video description. Good luck and see you next time.